Victoria, please, can you mute your mic? All right, thank you. So, um, so before I go ahead, um, I want to hear from you guys. Um, how has it been so far? How has it been so far? So how how do you say it? Like, um, are you, I think we've had two classes, I think three classes, but basically from the beginning to now, just two, three people, just give me what you think less before I go ahead. I just want to kind of take your feedback. Please, anybody should just um, speak so we can go ahead. Just, have you been learning? Has it been hard? Um, has it been challenging? Okay, um, Barker, please go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, so I think it's been, I don't even know the best word. It's been great. I personally have been learning but the only challenge not really a challenge is that we don't usually have much time like with you or with any instructor on the call and there's like a lot to learn so the only challenge i think i have is that there's so much to learn and i don't think that's a challenge but it's been great we've been learning or i have been learning every day yeah yeah thank you thank you very much thank you um Ogechi. Right. Okay. Um. For me, it's just just like she said. Um. It's been. It's of course it gets tougher. Um. The further we go in, the tougher it gets. But it's it has been a whole lot of fun. I've been learning new things, and like she said, the major problem is that we usually don't have enough time, and there is a lot for us to cover up on our own. So yeah, that is the only challenge I have. But besides that, it's been fun. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Any other person wants to give me their feedback? Any other person? All right, all right. Um, thank you, Ogechi and um, Bakar. Thank you. So, um, okay, first of all, I just pushed the assignment to the week four repo. To the to the repo, so you can go on that week for you see the assignment there. If, in case you want to do some um, correction, but do you guys get um like do you guys get feedback? Because I dropped some feedback on the form. I don't know. Do you guys receive mail with feedback or does it just come when they release this, re release the scores? We I usually don't get feedback. We get only the scores. We, we don't get feedback. Yes. Okay, I think if they should, if they put feedback, you should get feedback. But did you get any score based like today, this evening? I've not even seen any score for the past, um, since last week. I've not seen any score, even for last oh. week's task. And this. Okay, okay, okay. I think if they release the score, you see feedback because maybe the reason why I've not been seeing feedback is that I noticed that the other forms there are no feedbacks there, but I put some feedbacks on each each person's um each person's um, submission and you should just look at it and yeah, but you guys, you guys did great. It's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's okay. So yeah, let's go to um, what we have for today. So basically today we'll be talking about um, a couple of things. Um, talking about a couple of things. I'm talking about ERC20 tokens. ARC 721 tokens, ARC 115 tokens. We're talking about hard hats. And basically, we just try to see how much you can cover in this short time. So um, let me check. The, uh, let me check my. Um, yeah, so basically, we're talking about open Zeppelin, hard hat, and all. So, first off, um, I want to prepare your mind. So, because um, I know it's hard. Like based on your feedback, it's it's not easy. 
You understand? Especially the fact that the time is not um, very, we don't have a lot of time to spend together talking about these things. And the based on the plan is, is I think this is, is eight weeks, right? Yeah, based on the plan, it's meant to be eight weeks. Is it eight weeks? Yeah, okay. It's meant to be 12 weeks, right? So, um, yeah, it's not easy, but I want to just encourage you because personally, I know it's hard. You understand? I know it's not easy. That's why I always talk about going to make your own research because it's just like in class. There are some people that when they, um, when they, um, when the lecturer explains, they go home and like go and um, do their extra research. And when we're secondary, we used to call those kind of people over Sabi, who send you. You have gone to Gantt, the read the one that not send you, and not come here to oppress us. But yeah, in this real world, it will help you. You get it will help you. You're not, you're not even going to learn it so that you come and show off. And it's not even show off if you decide to answer questions. But your learning is because of it's important and it's for yourself. You get your learning because of it for yourself. So yeah, I want to encourage you. Um, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of opportunities for you as a blockchain developer. There are a lot of opportunities for you. There are a lot of things you can make, and it depends on how you want to see it, right? Like if you're trying to be um, philosophical or you're trying to like talk about things that are not tangible in terms of physical and like things like money. You're talking about things of the mind. You're talking about how being a blockchain developer you're really early in this space and this space is really revolution revolutionary and it's going to like change the world in quotes so you're building in a space whereby what you're working on it's really like it's you're you're early and you're part of the people that would really change things you understand on a global scale then you cannot come into the part of opportunities if you're earning 100k for a particular role in web 2 you'll be earning times two in web 3 just an instance it's just i'm giving an instance and it happens like that right the space is still young there are a lot of money coming in and they are paying a lot you understand so the, and whatever your motivation is just i just want to encourage you just keep at it right keep trying i saw some people's code very impressive some people own um just a bit lower than the people's own that like were very impressive and but generally, you guys are trying. At the same time, or what I'm saying in essence is just keep at it, right? Just keep growing. Just keep. I know some of you have other things you're doing, probably working, doing other things, just trying to learn this on the side. If you decide to put two hours every day to this thing, apart from this, like apart from us having a call, if it's possible, and decide to put two hours every day for the next three months, for the next six months, you would be so surprised how far you would you would go as a developer right you should just give it a try you know consistency is dangerous in a good way because those people you're looking up to those people you're looking up to what would bring you closer to where they are right now is you just being consistent at what you do you might not reach them because most times they are they, they keep growing but at the same time you guys you would grow to an extent that you guys will be able to talk on talk based on value right there's some like a lot of people you reach out to on twitter now and they'll not answer you it's not because of their, their snobbing it's because of you guys don't really have something to talk about but when you have value to offer you guys will have something to talk about so basically just keep at it be consistent if you say you want to put two hours every day put two hours every day for the next three months for the next six months for the next one everybody's part is different some people take longer than some other people but just know that if you're consistent i promise you you can literally do like crazy things it's a promise i'm not even trying to sell you a dream or trying to make you feel good. I'm just telling you that if you're consistent at this thing, you'd be amazed of how far you would go. Um, yeah, that is basically. So let's go straight to today's class. <laughs> you're welcome. So um, um, we're supposed to talk about Open Zeppelin. And in fact, everything is intertwined. Everything we're talking about today. So we're talking about hard hats. We're talking about Open Zeppelin. I'm talking about ERC20 tokens, ERC721 tokens, and ERC115 tokens. Now, where everything meets is that I can just create a hard hat project, then install Open Zeppelin in the hard hat project. Because at hard hat is a is a um is a tool for creating applications, blockchain application easily or easier. 
So it helps you deploy fast. It helps you like it just gives you everything. Like you can write the contract, write tests for the contract, deploy the contract just inside of Hard Hat. And also with because of Hard Hat is like it's it, it's a JavaScript application. I can install packages, and among those packages is Open Zeppelin, right? So because we are talking about everything, what I will do is I will install Hard Hat on this call, explain Hard Hat, then I will then I will install Open Zeppelin. Then use Open Zeppelin to explain ERC721, ERC, because they have their own that is the standard um, token stand. Like, the, the, you know, ERC20, ERC721, ERC115, they are standards, right? They were set out. They are like, okay, um, what, what actually happened was before there was like the only, the only form of money that was available on Ethereum before was just Ether. Right, ETA was the only form. That's why they call these other tokens that are not ETA or hot coins. You understand? So there was only ETA, and ETA is inbuilt into the blockchain, right? It's it's part of the protocol. You understand? It's part of the protocol and it's just part of the blockchain. But now they were like, How do we because of the blockchain is programmable? They're like, How do we create money? How do we create money on the blockchain? How do we create yeah, create money on the blockchain? And people were implementing it differently, like this one implement these. Another person implement these. People are just implementing their own. And to my knowledge, I don't really know how successful they were. But a guy, I've forgotten his name, brought about um, the ERC20 standard, which is for us to be able to have unanimously agree that this is how this thing to, should look, we should set a standard. You understand? So that you can be able to use what I built and I can be able to use what you built. It's not like this person money is looking like dollar and this person money is looking like looking like pounds and everybody's using different denominations or something like that. So we now have the same one standard and that's where the ERC, ERC. so the meaning of ERC is um, Ethereum request for comments. So let me just write that on the chat. So ERC is Ethereum request for comments. So basically the way it works is somebody will just come to their GitHub or I don't know where, where it starts, but basically the best will just say something and it would request people to comment on it. It would request people to comment on that. Then based on the feedback it's getting from other people, then it will, it will pass through different stages. Then they will not agree that this should be a standard on the on the Ethereum blockchain. I'm sorry, let me cut this call. So sorry about that. So um, yeah, basically ERC20 is a standard and it is one of those standards that passed through the whole process and the Ethereum community agreed that we would use it. The same thing as ERC721, the same thing as ERC115, There are a lot of ERCs, but not all of them have been agreed upon. Some of them are seen the review phase where people are commenting, people are criticizing and trying to say if it's what they want. But these three are like, the main ones that have been approved and people are using it and mind you it's not just about money there are different use cases you can say now that you want to write an eip sorry you want to um okay 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 look at how it works here if it first starts from eip you understand if it starts from eip so eip is i think you might have heard of eip eip is um eip is ethereum improvement proposal all right i'll soon go into code i just want to explain this theories first improvement proposal so yeah i think this is kind of self explanatory because like like i said you just wake up one day and say i don't like the way this thing is done i want to do it this way you understand then before from this eip and i mostly erc when people are now talking about okay like this eip now basically what you do is that you, you write some kind of um, a description of what you want to do or how you want what you want to change then this request for comments is that they now start talking about it right before it is now agreed upon then i said they now say that okay now we can use this so arc20 is the money standard of the blockchain of the ethereum blockchain and it's also used in many chains today many chains that are not ethereum so you go if you go to throw another i'll tell you trc 20 tokens it's still the same thing 
if you go to Binance Smart, you know, there you bet 20, it's still the same thing. But basically, they're just trying to um, follow this standard. And yeah, it's kind of the money standard. And it's called a fungible token, right? The word fungible means exchangeable. So ERC20 is the fungible token standard, or you want to call it the fungible money standard. Just like if I hold 100 and I give you that 100, the value doesn't change. If you give me the 100, the value doesn't change. If the money keeps appealing, the money, the value doesn't change. So in as much as we are exchanging and it's going through different places, it's, the value still remains the same, right? But now the next one, which is ERC721, is now like non-fungible, right? Non-fungible tokens. And one of the best um, examples of this in the real world is um, like a land now. It's not, okay, and it's basically NFTs, right? So if I'm calling ERC721, it sounds foreign, but yeah, you must have heard a lot about NFTs. But basically what it means is NFTs is non-fungible token, right? And it means that unlike ERC20, which is exchangeable like normal money, ERC721 is not exchangeable, right? It is non-fungible. It is non-exchangeable. What I, if I have an NFT and I have, and I give you that NFT, like if I have an NFT and I have an NFT, we, are, we don't have the same NFT. And so even if it's even the same smart contract, mine is unique, right? Even if they have, they have, one million of a particular nft their ids are different you understand so basically one good use case for nft in the real world or what you can use to like um explain nft in the real world is um a land right a land is like an nft because you would never have exactly the same land at that particular location in the world again that your location everything about your land is unique because that land it will, it, it will remain like it will remain in that place you understand so you cannot exchange your land land is not fungible because of the location because of the country a lot of a lot of things that would make it impossible to um to replicate or let's say in your body now your thumbprint your thumbprint is like an nft because you don't have no one has no no one has the same thumbprint as you do even your eye there's a way they do this biometric um eye scanning and stuff like that so the, anything you know the only thing of uniqueness you're thinking about you're talking about nfts anything that you know cannot be exchanged um yeah it's you're talking about nft and in terms of the value the value is kind of based on the subject so if i say i want to sell this is a very this is a bad ex example but sure, it's funny if i say i want to sell my thumbprint as an nft it's me that will determine the price you understand if i sound to say my thumbprint as an nfc i'll determine the price you will not come and tell me um how 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 much i should sell um my thumbprint for you understand so basically nfts the value is mostly determined by the person that owns it right you can just call any value because it's not like nf um erc seven two ones that are moving around and you can easily like for erc erc 20 tokens the the prices are automatically um like figure like there are some calculations you do on an air exchange token and you definitely know the price you'll be selling at the market nobody's saying the price like this thing has this is algorithm like the way it works is um if you have a token now on binance and you have it on coinbase just giving an instance imagine that they were the only exchange in the world so the way we determine the current price of that rc20 token is if we if we get the average of what two of them are selling we know the particular price and how they not the how they know how much they'll be selling is based on like the volume right the volume as people buy and sell as people buy and sell they would um the price will change can then empty the price down yeah like i said it is it is based on you like if i want to sell my thumbprint for like a very low price it depends on me right so yeah yeah that there's still this thing this thing about floor price floor price on um that they do show on open sea and stuff like that i think if even at that floor price if you don't want to sell you will not still sell but if you like it or whether i like it or not 
the price of an IRC20 token is an IRC20 token. You, you cannot even dispute it. It's not even you guys. But if they set a floor price now for board ape, and I don't want to sell my own at that floor price, I would not sell it. You understand? And the floor price is determined by this same algorithm I'm telling you about the way it's selling, the way it's moving, and stuff like that. So then EIP5, EI, um, ERC1155 is kind of the combination of the two. So basically, the person that brought about this ERC1155 is basically asking the question how do we create a smart contract that would, be, that would have features of ERC20 ERC and ERC721? Understand? So using an ERC1155 contract, you can create an ERC20 token. I can create an ERC721 token. So more or less, this is the whole idea of ERC1155. That's like, it's not complex. Do you get? The idea is how do we create a contract that would have the feature of both? Do you get? So using an ERC1155 token, you can create ERC20 tokens. I can create ERC721 tokens. Yeah, so let's go ahead. Let me share my screen. And we'll talk about hard hat, and then I'll go through codes for ERC721 and ERC1155 and ERC20. So, okay, let me share my screen. Okay. You guys can see my screen, right? Huh? Yes, yes. All right. Let me a minute. Let me set it up. It's too small right now, right? Just give me. All right. So basically. What I want to do now is I want to create a hard hat project. Then using that hard hat project, I would um, use hard hat. I would um, install Open Zeppelin. I would explain what Open Zeppelin is all about. Then I would use Open Zeppelin to explain the RC20 tokens. And with that, we're actually more than half done with what we have because that's like almost everything. So yeah, um, before I go ahead, Hard Hat is a development tool for smart contracts. This is like the only definition you need. Don't think about it. Like don't over, don't make it seem more complex. This is what it is. You understand? It's a tool that allows you to create smart contract at the same time do the other things that that is involved in creating smart contracts. So, for instance, now. I want to be able to create my smart contract. I want to be able to write tests for my smart contract. I want to be able to deploy my smart contract. I want to be able to verify my smart contract on ER, on Etherscan. So these three things I just mentioned now, you can do it on hard hat. You understand? Okay. Um, okay, she go ahead. These things that you just mentioned, can they also be achieved using Remix? You can't write tests on Remix. You can't write, you can't like write tests. When I mean write tests, like you can't write actual use code to test code on Remix. You can only use, do manual testing on Remix. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and also like even the verification. Yeah, I think there's a plugin for that. But even there are more things you might want to do. Like if you go into a really, a really huge NM, so smart contract, you will know that Remix is just for when you want to play around. It's not really for like develop real development process. Because there are sometimes you might even want to have your front end in your hard hat application and it to contain everything you get. So yeah. So let me create this. Let me create another folder under week five. And call it hard hat. Then using that then we can now experiment as much as we want so get our terminal take five 
had had Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All, right. All right. So, um, just a little bit bolder. Okay. Okay. Let me see. This is better, right? So, as I'm doing, I'll just send you the hard hard doc so you can be following me because I would like to follow the hard hard doc. So, um let me send you the hard hard documentation so you just uh, follow along um there's something i want to correct um i noticed that some people didn't test like about two people just sent me smart contract that has errors so it's like even if sometimes even if you have you wrote your smart contract well i cannot start running everybody's smart contract the fact that i just want to visually look at it and at the same time remix doesn't show me that red stuff you understand so please next time make sure at least make sure it, it, it is working even if you are not like it shouldn't show error if it shows error it means that you didn't test it or something like that so please just Take note of that. Yeah, so um okay, I already have I already have had that, so I'll just skip the installation process. Then but you can go and check it out. So first of all, we need to do uh -huh, MPX hard hat. So that's like the first MPX hard hat. And it, it just gives us, it has this like boiler plate of what it should look like. Oh, I have it now. Let me send this to, yeah, this is a touch. Uh, let me try this one. Tell me the command is not exist. Go ahead. Um, our other tutor, um, Fali, she took us through the steps to install hard hats. I don't know, do we still need to go through this or is there a way we can just, um, oh, sorry. oh, nice, 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 nice. So, okay, well, hard hat was in, okay, okay, since you already, okay, now let me just try. But is, does, does everybody like agree with that? Do you want to? Like in case I think I think you might need to go over this one for for some of us that didn't get it. I mean, for those that got it, is there any way? How can we um um fish it out? How? How can you? Sorry, I didn't get you. For those that um successfully installed it that day, how yeah. can we get by using it? Like. How can we find it? Hard hats. Yeah. Yes. How can you find hard hats? Yeah. Yes. Um, I gave you like use the link now. Like sorry, I don't mean I don't know what you mean by how can you find. Is it like um? Explain, please explain. I don't. I don't get. I don't get. Like you I can mean, just. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so basically, um, installing hard hat as a as a package instead of because what I wanted to do the first time, I wanted to use hard hat that was like in the whole using the hard hat that was installed globally, but it was telling me to install it again. So based on the documentation, I want to install it as a package. So I think this would work. So, um. MPS hard hats, so this is better. So now they're asking me what I should create. Normally, I like using TypeScript, but for this pro project, I use JavaScript. Um, go ahead, edit this one. Okay, thank you, Sean. Okay, thank you. So, um, so I have 
Okay, so my question is that um, this ADAT installation of its then is it a one time thing? Like, if I download Node on my system, it's just one time thing, and I can just check the version I have, or does it, or do I have to download it for each of every project that I will be writing? I don't know if you get yeah, my exactly. question. That's actually why that's what I was trying to ask. That's what oh. I last but it's always download. I mean, install it for every project. That's the one she showed us. Okay, okay. So, like, I don't know if you noticed, but I was trying to do that same thing here. Like, I was trying to just use MPX hard hat and create without using it as a, a dev dependency. Like, like the way I was using it here, I was trying to call it from my global, like my whole computer. But what is on the dock right now is that I need to create, I need to install it as a dev dependency. So, yeah, always do it like that because this guy has changed a lot of things and it's only wise to follow the doc. So what I just saw here is use it like inside of the project you get. So yeah, that is it basically. So you can just create a project and install it inside. You don't have to um you don't have to install it globally. Yeah. Based on the documentation. So let me just go through. Should I still go through each what each file is doing? Or are you do you guys already? clear on it please go through it again all right so um we know git ignore right git ignore the files we should ignore and um yeah git ignore the files we should ignore and as we were using typescript this file called type chain and type type chain types is very very important but we're not in typescript so we have to skip that so another reason why you need remix sorry why you need hard hats or tools like this is because of things like type chain because type chain gives you type like if you're a if you this coding thing like if you're using type safe languages you it will save you a lot of errors like it's only in typescript that i can write code for one hour and run it and not get an error because of types so like i'm kind of being very careful because anything you do you put type anything so you avoid a lot of errors right so type chain kind of gives your contracts um gives your contract type so it just like runs its code on the background and gives types to your contract so you don't have to start doing those things yourself so yeah that's that for git ignores um then we know all these ones now emv node modules coverage stuff like that ad hat config this is kind of the settings settings folder for ad hat so basically your settings and this is package adjacent normal javascript stuff npm stuff readme had had so yeah and rather so um i don't want to really go too much because it's, it's a bit time consuming so let let's just go straight to let's just go to straight to open zeppelin then we'll see other things we can do with hard hat so yeah this is the contract this is the contract that comes with um that comes with hard hat so we don't need it right now we don't need it. It's not our, yeah, we don't need this. So, or should we even, okay, I just need Open Zeppelin. So basically, let me go and look for Open Zeppelin and install Open Zeppelin. Let me just call this one ARC20. Then I'm not gonna look for it. Okay, let's just call it Web3 Ladies Token or W3L Token, yeah, Web. 3 w3l token so this is like our own token right so in case you have always wanted to create a token yeah it's your chance <laughs> so yeah i want to look for open zeppelin and install it um let me search open zeppelin yeah so i'm looking for let me explain what open zeppelin is open zeppelin is a is a company that deals on security you get. And because of the blockchain is really, really um, susceptible to like attacks, they are kind of the industry standard for building secure contracts. So anything you want to do, and you know that Open Zeppelin has already written that contract for you, just go and use it because they are like trusted, you understand? So basically they have written a lot of contracts that you can go and use. And since, like I said, a lot of hacks are happening nowadays. In fact, from the beginning, hacks have been happening. 
So basically, people use their own contracts, and it's advised to use their own contracts. Except you just want to use it for experimental purposes. If you are deploying to mainnet, anything you know that opens up is already done. Don't implement it yourself. It's not like you don't know what you're doing, but at the same time, not everybody's a security guy. There are some things you might not even think about, and you are saying this in your contract. So take note of that. Yeah. Um, Open Zeppelin is like the OGs. So basically, they have contract. They have any contract you can think about. Most popular contract, rather, like ARC20, ARC721, they have it. So that's what I want to go and get now. So basically, I've gotten it. So NPM. So I don't like, I, I didn't use NPM. I use YAN. So I just change this to YAN add. So I just install Open Zeppelin. Then yeah, so we now have Open Zeppelin, right? We should yeah, Open Zeppelin, Open Zeppelin. Where are you? Hello, where is it? Okay, let me just check my package or JSON. This is a lot to go through. Let me just show you guys here. So we have Open Zeppelin here as a dependency. So now we can import it here. So the way we did importation before <laughs> importation sounds weird in my mouth so the way we did we imported before um we just import it here too so basically let me just import it so um import import so Open Zeppelin. All right, let me let me go and look for it because I want to start typing all these things. I want to see the particular folder it's in. Open Zeppelin. Oh, where are you now? Ah, good. Okay, sorry, I forgot. And it has ads in front of it, so it's up here. So let me first and copy this one. Rename. Let me copy. So, so these are actually the parts. So basically, we are looking for ERC20 token. So it's inside of token. So token is here. Then is inside ERC20 token. So ERC20 token. ERC20 token. Then let's see. Then the token itself, ERC20 token. Have we talked about interfaces, or were you ever thought about interfaces in this in this class? No. Oh, okay. I think. Go ahead. You want to say something? Go ahead, Bakker. Yeah, so I think we to discuss that in the last class, as last week. Okay, we're supposed to discuss it. Okay, yes, I I did it. Yeah, I did it here. I know I said I did. I did it here now. The one I said you guys should go and read up that I didn't come on Friday. I did all those things here. See, I did like I wrote like contract explaining them and stuff like that. So please, if you don't understand interfaces, just come here and check it out. I wrote. Contracts, explain them, abstract contract to libraries, and even like calls. Please just go and check it out. Yeah. I know it was we meant to do it last week, but now I remember I did it. Yeah. So just please check it there. Um, Okay, hey, it has contracts in front of it because they are showing me, giving me an error that is, it's not found. So this should work, right? This should work, not found. Import. This one should work now. Open Zeppelin, contracts, token, ERC20. Yeah, I should change it. No worry. Let's leave it like that. So let's create our contracts and just okay. First of all, let's go and look at how they implemented it. 
now you see what i'm telling you like there are some things you see here now that in the, in the standard it was not there it was not stated in the standard but they just knew that it's the safest it's the safe thing to do but i'll just go through this real quick because we um time is not on our side so this is the implementation of the erc20 standard all right so this is where they said it's the implementation is blah 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 the implementation is agnostic to the way tokens are created this means that for supply mechanism okay what they are saying is that it is unopinionated meaning that they leave a lot they left a lot of things to you for you to decide but it's actually risky sometimes because if you don't really know what you're doing you might go and implement something that would shoot you in the leg or oh, sure yeah, you're telling that you should do it the way you want to do it but they have told you what they want so basically this is the implementation and they are using the ARC, ARC20 interface. If you had, if you check interface, or if you if you went through what I gave, you would know how interface work. So I just want to is to explain the interface is easier than explaining explaining the code, because what what they did here is just normal solidity code. But I want to explain the standard by what the interface. Because basically the interface is a blueprint. The interface is like this is how I want this contract to look like. And if you are using me basically if you're using the interface you should be able to you should implement it the way the interface is implemented and if you don't implement it like that it will throw errors so i want to go and look at what the blueprint is and that blue the blueprint will give you the idea of how the ERC 20 look ERC standard looks like so yeah so this is it uh this is the standard all right this is the standard so okay let's leave this one let's leave this one's our uh, events but let's come here. So basically, I first tell you that every year is talking. Can you please zoom in? Okay, okay. Oh, I think. Yeah, this is better, right? Yeah. All right. So. First of all, they are telling you that every ERC20 token must have a total supply. If you read, okay, let me let me look for the EIP standard. So on your in your free time, you can look at it. But let me just EIP20 standard. Remember, EIP and ERC20 they are the same thing, but they are just different at different stages of the of the um of the standard. So let me paste that on the chat. So check it out, the EIP20 standard. So check the chat for the meeting. You see the IP twenty and just look at how it is. Like basically, the, if you look at how it is, this guy Fabian and Vitalik, they just explain how they want to be. And if you check the status, you see final. So this one has like passed, passed the whole checking process. That's what I was telling you about. So it's final. So it has been approved. There are some that are still in. If you check this um this web website now, you see that a lot of EIPs that have not been approved and things they are at different stages. So back to what i was saying so according to the standard every irc token must have a total supply function must have a total supply function first of all so basically the comment here says returns the amount of token in existence yeah this reminds me of something there's some people that really commented their code in the assignment and i really appreciate that it's good it's not like comments is part of the whole thing but readable code is is good business so Thank you for doing that. So this returns the amount of token in existence. So basically every ERC20 token must have this, which keeps track of every token created, either minted after the launch or just statically, um, because some, some tokens have fixed total supply. On tokens, you can mint them after after launch. But sure, this should always keep track. If you mint tomorrow, you should always increment this with the new minting. So then this one, which is balance of each, every ERC20 token should have a balance of function, which takes in an address and returns the amount that that address has. So basically what this function does is that it keeps track of how much you have. So on Binance now, or, okay, let me know it's Binance, let me just, on Metamax. Okay, okay, Chi, go ahead. Please, now that um, now you talked about the supply, I've always uh, been curious about something. Why do um, projects um, 
have really large total supply why do the developers um mean to really large number and then start to implement burning mechanisms to reduce the supply why not just um originally from when you're writing the smart contracts putting the actual number of um, tokens you want why mint excess like billions and trillions and then you start burning them why why did they do that okay so first of all this this has a lot of the economics of the whole thing and i'm not really good at that but first of all what i think is um because they, they forget that it's just code and but when it comes to money you're talking about economics and this, some people are really good at these things and they're talking about things like deflationary tokens like the burning mechanism you're talking about so but what i know is that the more total supply the more people that are buying and if you have more tokens people can buy then you have more money for pre-sale like if you are giving out your token people are so all those things are taken into consideration but they have like reasons for these things based on the economic part of Do you get? Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So yeah, so they are like other you can go and read about tokenomics and stuff like that, but um yeah, that's just what I think. And I've not really taken a lot of time to think I don't really buy a lot of tokens myself, so I really don't know much about the whole economics thing, but sure. Yeah. So um like I said, this keeps track of the balance of the user and if you go to metamax now now go back to what i going back to what i said i said that the reason why a standard is good because it, it creates this unified standard to do things for instance now this is my metamax right and let me oh i my metamax can show try but you guys you guys know metamax now i'm gonna just show my metamax and the balance and you see that that balance that you're seeing there Internally, Metamax is calling balance of function to know how much is in my wallet or how much that address is, 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 is holding. And if you go to another wallet, they are doing the same thing. If you go to Rainbow, Rainbow Wallet, they are doing the same thing. If you use Wallet Connect, they are doing the same thing. Any wallet you use, they are doing exactly the same thing to get the balance. Now, you see where that unified standard is. You see the advantage of unified standard. Now, Metamax doesn't have to create a new standard to just to, 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 to talk about your token. So far, it knows that it's an IRC20 token. It just knows that it's a call balance of. If for any reason you do not implement balance of on your function, which is not likely, like most people, if I most people just come and use this function, this IRC, this um, open Zeppelin contract, and just in inherit it and deploy. So, like 99% of people that deploy IRC20 tokens have balance of. And if you don't have balance of, you have a problem because people will not be able to see how much they have set. Because if you go to trust wallets, it's still the same balance of their calling to know the amount of token you're holding. So very, very important. That's why standards are good. They, 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 they help um, people to be able to do things easily. Because if this was, if this was something like, um, if this was something like, um, every like for instance, now I'll, I'll create my own token instead of balance of I'll put balance. This person create their own instead of balance of the output. Um, Amount, 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 um, like they'll, they might even call the function how much. So, but based on the standard, everybody can just say, okay, this is how it is done. If you don't do it like this, then your token is not an IRC20 token. And any problem you find out during when you are using it, you don't want to cost it yourself because it was stated beforehand. So, yeah, um, this is the transfer function. This one is transfer function. Basically, what this does is that. It allows you to send tokens. So the whole sending process I do for you to send on Uniswap. Now I said I think you remind me yesterday about that rock putting you talked about. Now what these scam tokens do, or these tokens that don't allow you to sell, is that they come when they implement this function. Mind you, the standard does not tell you how the function should look. It's telling you that to find the name is here. For instance, now you might have this name now. You have, you have the name otherwise it's very bad to just go and buy any token you see because of their their hyping it now let me let me come to the transfer function of this of open zeppelin let me see how they implemented their own transfer okay i think it's up exactly transfer now this is this you see this is 
this is the interface this is the implementation remember this is the interface this is the blueprint this is what they say it should look like and this is them implementing what they say that it should look like now what these developers do is that they come in here and write something like if something something just fail like there's one token that they dropped to my wallet and I wanted to sell it and they told me that I should visit one website. It's just basically adding one statement that just makes sure that the function always fails. And you have token, but you can never sell it out. And at the same time, because of it's in the market, the, like there's one token I have, the price is like crazy, but I cannot sell it. You understand? They might even set it that only the owner can sell. So probably the owner has already cashed out on everybody and like, like he has already um, rug pulled. You might even said put only owner here, and only owner can call this function. And anytime you call it, they will tell you that um, something, something, something. So that is, that's that's answered the question from yesterday. The way those things work is that they come into this transfer function and, and implement what they want to implement. In fact, it's not even transfer. If it's Uniswap, Uniswap doesn't call transfer; it calls transfer from. But transfer from implements they actually still the same thing. But transfer from allows somebody to spend for you, but we'll get there. But yeah, basically, they just, they just come to this function and implement what they want to implement. So the standard doesn't stop you from implementing. Like it just says that it should the name should be transfer, and the argument should be this. But what is inside? What's inside this code block? Inside this block now does not concern them. If you like, don't put anything inside. It's your own. That's why most people just come and inherit in, inherit open sampling contract and and deploy their token sharp sharp. And Funny enough, eh, for something that takes like less than 20 minutes to do, I find it very funny that people just buy tokens anyhow. Because we can create our own token now, 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 like in like 10 minutes. Meanwhile, when it comes out, people start rushing it like it's it's something that took a lot of time. It's something that anybody can create. And people are still falling for a lot of all these scams. But sure, that's by the way. So um let me go back to the interface. So we'll talk about transfer, which allows us to transfer token. So now this is allowance. So for, you know, if you're using um, MetaMax now and you click on send, right? This is the function that will be called, right? Because using this function, they're taking MSG or sender, which is you. So they know that anybody calling this thing, they just use MSG or sender. Let me go back to this. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, this thing is not even hard to create. Some people are just creating it and people are falling for it. So now in this transfer function, in this transfer function, you see that they use images of sender. Don't, don't mind this function. It's, it's the image of sender, but they implemented it another way. But this is this the image of sender that we know. But it's now a function and they, they did they, they are reasons for this, but we're not going to that. So basically, in the transfer function, they just take image of sender and used for the operation, you understand? They don't ask you who is sending, they just take it that is the owner that is calling the function. So that's why this one, it just takes in the person you're sending it on the amount because it, it automatically takes the person calling it as the owner. So what this allowance does is that for you to be able to use exchanges, you need to be able, you'll be able to allow them to spend for you. Because once you click on swap, on Uniswap, you are not, the one that is sending that token because Uniswap has to call the, the token contract on your behalf. And for them to be able to call, call the token on your behalf, you need to allow them. That's your idea of allowance. So you are telling them that I want you to be able to spend a particular amount of my token. You understand? So um, this allowance now is, is more like, is a getter function. What actually does the um does the allowance thing is, is called an approve function which is this one so basically if you call this function now if you pass in my address here you understand i'm passing uniswap address here you see how much i have I, i've allowed uniswap to spend on my behalf but here now this approve function but what it does is that I'll put in a swap address here as the, as the send as a spender. You know what? See how they call it spender? It's I think it's quite self-explanatory. Spender, spend for you. So I put in Uniswap address here, and I put in the amount I want them to spend for me. And that's that why before on Uniswap, you will see two buttons. You first approve, 
before you swap. But I think now they now bond the two of them together, which is good for UX because not everybody really understand the whole process. But before you see approve button, then you see swap. When you when you approve, it will not grade that one out. Then you now press swap. But it's a two step process, and those, those things are not really good for user experience. So now I think I'm not really sure. But I've used the exchanges whereby they just bundle it as one, one function. They just bundle it as they just put it as one button. I so when I click on it, yeah, go ahead. I used to use swap recently. I didn't use that. I didn't notice this. Um, this this one you're saying. Okay. I still okay. have to Practice. do um swap and then approve. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. I think I've used exchanges where. They just have only one, which is swap. And when you do that, they do like they call the two functions. They call the two functions for you. But yeah, but that's value. Basically, you have to approve before you before you swap. And that swap, it's calling this transfer from function. But we'll get there. So basically, this approve is telling you that okay, Uniswap, I want you to be able to spend 50 USDT for me. And what they are going to do for you is that now they'll help you swap it because that that would say they should you should help you and do they'll help you swap it understand then this is the last function here which is transfer from so because you know this one now this transfer function we are inferring Um, am I the only one that can't hear anything, please? No. You're not the only one. I can't, can't hear anything. anything. I can't hear
Please, can anyone hear? Or is it my network? I can't hear anything. Okay. So, Adrian, if you are if you are listening. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm sharing his screen, so I think he didn't want to find it. I think he didn't. I think what you need was... I think his network is very bad. I think his network. It should be yes or maybe the network or something. Uh, even mentorship is off. Uh, what's happening? We're completely on our own. I'm telling you, like, they just left us here. What's going on? I'm sorry, I'm saying just did magic now, 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 and I don't understand. Can you hear me? Sir, good, you're back. Yeah, we can hear you. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. No, I'm saying it's just have it just disappear like, like, no. All right, let me, let me go ahead. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't break again. Yeah. So, like I was saying, using the transfer from, what happens is that units will be spending your token for you. You understand? So they are spending it for you. So instead of them to call like the owner, rather they'll just pass in your own address as the transfer. Like when they say from, that's your address to, to then then you actually um, you are still the one getting. You see, they won't get in it, but basically, the from address will be you. So, the way it works is they would be the ones who call this function on the token. You understand? So, basically, contract calling contract. And when you, when, when contract calling contract, you're, non, you're, you're no more the caller. You've, you've, you've actually pressed swap and the process has started. But where your contract to show is inside of Uniswap and not inside of the token because it's Uniswap that's calling the token understand so um that's it for arc20 tokens i don't want to start going through this thing the implementation is basically just them writing the code like i'll advise you to read through it or rather i want you to part of your assignment this week is to implement the arc20 token but for your own good just go through this contract and read through it you'll see that it's basically just implementation of the standard so i want to tr let me see if if I can just really just create. So if I just do this now, you know, we're going to create web three ladies token. If I just say is, you know, inheritance is ERC20. That's finished. This is an ERC20 token. If I deploy this thing now, right? If I deploy it, so let me just come here. I just need to call, I just need to, um, I need to just, 
passing some things to the constructor. So you see this thing now, this constructor. If I want to deploy this now, what I'll do is I'll just come here now and call the constructor. And I'll just do ERC20. ERC20 token. ERC20. I'll just pass in the name and the symbol. So the name is web web three ladies token and the address sorry the, the symbol is w three l then i'll just do this so what is this so basically this is it so now going back to hard hats let me see how now if i want to just run the code to see if this contract doesn't have errors let me let me look for the command on hard hats um hard hat, wait, hard hat. But so let me just go to hard hat and compile. So hard hat compile. I think there's a there's a command. Yes, MPX hard hat compile. So if I use that now, MPX, it should compile this code and create an artifact for us. And the artifact basically is an ABI. And what ABI does is that it provides, you know, someone asked before that how whether um whether i would have a front end for these things the answer is yes but the thing is um the thing is javascript doesn't understand solidity and solidity doesn't understand javascript there's two separate environments the only thing closest to javascript that you can understand is the abi because the abi is a json file and when the artifact rather the, the artifact also contains the abi well, the ABI is the main thing we need to be able to. So the ABI, ABI just gives, tells JavaScript the function it should be calling to get some things on the Solidity contract. So what it does is using um, tools like ethers.js and web3.js. We'll still talk about that, but I think it's tomorrow because I don't think we'll have the time to talk about that today. So ethers.js uses that ABI to call functions in the contract, you understand? So good, they told us compile successfully. So we just have, we just deployed our ERC20 token. So that's it, you understand? So as we want to create this thing yourself, you start writing all these things yourself. But when you know that OG has given you, OG opens Zeppelin has told you what to do, just follow them. That's just what I just did. I just came here, do. But if I say you should go and create the ERC20 token, I don't want you to do the same thing because you're looking for learning, right? Because if you just come and, if someone says I should build the ERC20 token for them, I might do this, but you would want to make sure that you are because there are small small mistakes you can do here. For instance, now we did not we did not we did not set we did not set total supply. We did not set total supply. You understand? We did not we did not uh, mint. So this total supply, we did not actually set it. Do you get? So all these things like this that you might if you just go and but so if you read these contracts now. You will know that you are meant to say this thing. But if you just come and do what I did here, you will not understand it. But it's not like I cannot say the, the total supply and everything. But just know that for your own sake, read through this contract. Even when you're creating your own, you write the functions one by one by yourself. So let's look at the ABI I talked about. Um, let me close this one. Uh -huh. So see, this, these two things were created when I compiled artifact and catch. They were not there before. So when I open the artifact, the artifact contain. Why am I seeing? Why is it not opening? Voila, why is it not opening? But this compiled successfully. Let me see. For some reason, it's not opening. I don't know. It's meant to contain a file. Okay, well, let me let me see this one. Cache. No, this is not what I need. It's meant to contain. If 
for the sake of learning, don't use it. Like you would read through it, but you type the code out line by line by yourself. It's not like you, if, if you want to create a token for somebody, sure, you should use Open Zeppelin. But for the sake of learning, like for learning, you create it yourself so that you'll be able to learn. If I just say you should go and create a token and just go and do just what I did here, did anything change? Nothing changed, no. We just did, like, you understand? But when you go through it yourself, each line, even if you don't type, you are copying the function, but at least you are going through it yourself and you are seeing that this is what this thing is doing. I don't know, something is wrong here. When I create, when I compile, this thing is meant to show. No, use hard hats. Use hard hats. Yes, you can, like, the way I do it most times is that I write on Remix. Then I copy the code and paste it on hard hat or the other ones like Foundry. But I just paste it on Foundry on hard hats. Then I write the and I then I run this compile to make sure that it's working. Okay, Elizabeth, go ahead. I don't know how to use hard hat. Though. Yeah, that that's what we are using here. And you don't need to do any special tutorial. I just need to go through their docs and pull it step Is by it step. Your... Yeah? Is this your VS code? Yes. Is this your VS code? Yes. Okay, I came in, I came in late. Okay, I watched the video before. All right, thanks. Yeah, and if you check, the, okay, I don't know if you see the, okay, it's not more on the chat. I sent the tutorial for Hard Hat. So if you just type Hard Hat and go to your website, click on tutorial, it's there. So this contract compiles successfully. That means we don't have any errors. Forget this red thing here. The JavaScript is. The, the intelligence is it's not it's not thinking well so there's no error so yeah let's quickly go to the next one which is nfts um nfts so let's go again let's create another file called web3 ladies nft w3 l nft dot so so um go ahead go ahead okay um just want to be sure that i got what you're saying clearly so before we can view this we need to integrate it to the front end right before we can view this token view when you say view what do you mean before we can see how it looks like or is it just this code is that all? which one is it this one? Is it this 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 one? No, yeah, this one can... the reason why you're not seeing the whole code is because of we are inheriting. And if you want to see that one, you can just come here. It's it's all here. Okay. Yeah. So so you know, not everybody understands code. So the reason why front end is there is so that random people can just Come and use it but basically you can use it exactly the way it's on the front end, just that now you are using it with code. Understand if I go to Remix now and do this thing now and I deploy the other function that is shown on the side will show and I can start interacting with it. But for other users that are, that are not tech savvy, yeah, there's no problem. All no right, problem. Watch the recording. Yeah, so for that people that not that not tech savvy, um, they can just use the front end like Uniswap front end. Now there's some like I said the other day, like, there's some people that don't use Uniswap front end. They use other contracts to talk to Uniswap. They don't even go to the front end at all. It's really people that do all this MEV stuff. I don't know if you've heard of MEV and them um, arbitrage and stuff like that. So um, yeah. So let's go back to what we're saying. So basically now we've created ERT20 token. Now I want to create um, an NFT. So basically I just want to copy this thing and edit it. I want to copy it then. Now, before we found this in token, so we can also find the IRC 10 token, token ball. Sorry, IRC 71 in token ball. Instead of this, we'll, we'll, we'll change this to 721. I'll change this to 721. 721. So, yeah, we now have this. So, I can do the same thing here. Just bring this in. Okay, bring this in. Call this IRC 721. So this inheritance, I might not have talked about inheritance on its own, but I've used inheritance in many places that you would just kind of understand it, hopefully. But basically inheritance is just taking from other, other codes and like, like for instance, now this is now says that this, 
this thing now has everything that this one has. So W3L now has everything that this one has. So basically just saying that I am you and you are me. So everything you have is, I have it too. I cannot even decide to modify it inside of here, which we will not be doing on this call. But yeah, it's kind of taking everything inside. The way you inherit and works in other languages. So let's go through. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, is this the for non fungible tokens for NFTs? Huh? Yes, yes, it is for NFTs. But, um, can't I just go to a mint and images and NFT? Huh? What's the difference between images and just going to open to a minting and images and NFT? Yeah, so if you if you go to open and mint NFTs or create a collection under them, you're basically using an EI, EIP one one five five, like I said. So they they use their own EIP one one five five to create e entities for everybody. But if you want to really control, for instance, now imagine that you want to say that. You want to do um you want to say that on your own nfc you want to be able to do um you want to be able to mint you want to be able to reward nfts after 30 days something like that Log a logic like that open c will not have it in mind that you want to do something like that so if you want the full power and you want to be able to do one thousand things in your, in your contract then you should just go and you should write it yourself but yeah if you just want to do normal token launch token let people come and buy and you can use open c but yeah, for if you want to have full power over what you want to do, creating your own NFT is 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 a good idea or is the best idea rather. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Um, Bakari, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but I have installed ad ads, but when I try to compile, there's this error. Okay, what is it telling you? Um, let me check. Um, NPM one config global blah blah blah. Cannot find module add that to box. Mm. Yeah, we might not be able to debug that here, but probably later. Later, if you are still having the same error, then you can mm -hmm. you can chat and have a call. But we might not be able to debug that here. But yeah, just try out, try it out, and see if it works. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, um, I did to so go ahead. Okay, thanks. So I'm just trying to get the old flow. So I can see that um, under your token folder, we have ERC20, and that is where we have the utils too, that is carrying the ERC721. So my question is that when we wanted to create that token, we used the ERC20, we inherited the code. Now that we want to create an NFT, we are using the 721. So is it that that IRC20 is to create token? And when we want to uh, create an NFT, we use the IRC721. I don't know if you get my question. Yes. So I'm yes. trying to understand the flow, though. Yes. So like, like I said, ERC20 is a standard. ERC721 is a standard. EIP1155 is a standard. See another one, yes, ERC777. But it's not really widely used like that. So basically, when I was going to create ERC20, I used it. I used this this one, this ERC20 here. When I wanted to create, now I want to create ERC721. I want to explain this one. And I, now okay, I want to explain the interface, which is yes, explain what the standard is all about, even before the implementation, which is this one. So this is the implementation, and this is the interface. And what I did here is that I read through the implementation. for I, I read through the interface for you guys, but it's the implementation that I inherited here. Understand. So if I only want to do yeah yeah one one five five, still the same thing I'll do. I'll come here. The interface is here, and I'll now the interface is here now. Um, this is the implementation of RC one one five five. So yeah, you are you are you, you are getting the points. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 all right. Thanks. So the same way that we inherited ERC two zero um code to create a token, can we inherit that ERC seven two one to create yes. the token as well? Okay. Yes, to create an NFC. So they are not the same kind of tokens. ERC20 is a kind of token which is fungible, exchangeable, like money. ERC721 mm -hmm. is NFC, which is not exchangeable. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I, I think I got it now. All right. Um, so yeah, ERC20 is for token. Sorry, ERC20 is for token. Then the 721 is for NFTs. 
Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Um, Ioma, you were raising your hand. Oh, Ioma, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. Is she still on the call? Um, okay, okay. So, um, let me go through the interface for ERC 721. Um, so these are events like before, these are events, transfer events, approval events, approve for all. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to that. So okay, she has joined back then. Ihoma, do you want to speak now? Do you want to ask your question now? Sorry, that was a mistake. Oh, 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 okay, that's fine. So um so basically the same thing we have balance of this one has balance of two so what this does is instead of you know before this this function will tell you how many tokens you have this one will tell you how many nfts because for instance now this is an ERG721 token right i can decide to have call it like this is our token now we're purely used nft and because you guys are 20 i'll say i want to mean 20 understand but one person might decide to say they want to go there five you understand or or if i let's just say that i want to give nft nft for like a, as a reward to people that used to come to classes so instead of attendance we'll not be giving nft too so imagine you've attended all the classes from from since when we started you have like at least like say let's say 15 nfts right so if you want to know how many you have we'll come and use this balance of function when when when, when i pass in your address here okay yeah so um this balance of function you tell you how many nfts you have you get so just like the other one so now the idea of ids so you know i just said that um if we wanted to congratulate people and try to encourage people that come to classes we we'll give them nfts right now each nft has an id so for instance now the first nft you have one depending on how you want to do the numbering you must not start with one but the normal way is using one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So imagine that you're the first person that collects the NFT, your ID is one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, if you pass in an ID here, you get the owner, right? So if I want to know the owner of a person, if I, if I don't know the owner of an NFT, but I know the ID, and this is public, you understand? So anybody can call this function. I can just go into the contract now and say, ah, who has, who is the owner of one? I'll just put one and they'll show me let's say who get his address as the owner of the N one nft i can put two now they will show me that it's for you know so, someone else backer or like elizabeth anybody right so basically you just put in the id and it gives you the address you understand going back this one you put in the address and it tells you how many it just tells you how many not it does not give you the token it just tells you how many you understand and this thing is just based on the standard right Okay, let me also find the link for EIP one, EIP seven two one, so you can also go through it. EIP seven two one standard. Yeah, I got that. So if you check two is in the final stage, and it has been approved. So let me send that. And so now this is the standard EIP seven two one. It's kind of explain. All these functions i'm telling you if you check the if you check that article you see that it has all these functions so then you, you now have safe transfer from right so um there's a function called transfer from right just like in fact exactly the same thing we explained before which is that this transfer from allows um people to send for you right this, this function allows people to send for you so you won't be the one sending it yourself. It allows people to send it for you. So when I mean people now, I mean OpenSea or other NFT exchanges, NFT marketplaces rather. So you know an OpenSea, we know Foundation, we know Rarible and so on. But the thing with NFT is that the way it works or the way it's meant to be implemented is that only one marketplace will be approved at the same at once. 
So, but you might you can decide to do it the another way, but there'll be a problem because two two exchanges cannot sell one NFT. So if they sell it here, the other people will have problems. So that's why I feel like it's a good implementation. So basically, on Uniswap now, I can approve Uniswap and approve Sushi Swap to send my tokens. If they spend and if 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 this one spent and it's still remaining, the other one can spend. You understand? But when something's only one, I'll it's like once I give OpenSea the ability to spend my token for me. I cannot give foundation the same thing. I cannot give variable only one part. So that's the main difference between ERC721 and ERC20 token transfer form function. So 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 see the way it works here. It puts you, you put in the from address, which is your address. And this one doesn't have the normal transfer, it just has transfer from. So even if you're the one calling it, you just have to put in your address yourself. So it takes in transfer from it. So it takes in from, it takes in the address you're sending it to. Then the token ID, you understand? Now, the way this one works, this transfer from, safe transfer from is that, imagine, just, just like I was saying yesterday, that if we don't implement a way to pull out money from our contract, and anybody sends money into the contract, then there's a problem. That contract, who, who, that, that, that token will be there forever. So that ETA will be there forever and you cannot touch it. So in this case, how this one works is that this transfer from would, um be able to send token send nft to any address you understand without it's not safe now it's transfer from but when it comes to safe transfer from or this one this one is able to pass data but just know that they are they are the same thing fundamentally so in this one now what happened with the safe is that if you implement this contract so if you implement this function what you are saying is that you check that that address you're sending the, the NFC to has the ability to receive, or let this, this function will fail. If you use this one, it will not fail. If you actually send token now to a contract address that doesn't know anything about your NFC, it will send with this one. But if you transfer from, there's something that checks that this the person you're sending it to, or the contract, the address you're sending it to can receive, and which is this I receiver. So let me just explain this I receiver. So this I receiver basically what they are saying is that if your contract address implements this function, that means you have the ability to receive to receive NFTs. So most times they use safe transfer from so that you will not be because if you don't use safe transfer from, you'll just be losing NFTs because if you just send your address, your token now, that way you see that a lot of all these um like Uniswap. Now if you go to Ethers, Ethers can now check in this one. You see that a lot of NFTs is inside of it, but they, they cannot touch it because I don't think they implemented all these things. In fact, they, they don't need it. You understand? They, they don't even need to implement it because they don't, they are not, if you're sending them NFTs, you're on, you're on your own. You understand? And they, they cannot pull it out. You, you cannot pull it out. Some of them are even trying to scam or something like that. So um, people just send NFTs to them. But if you use this safe transfer from the contract, we check the function will check that the contract you're sending it to or the address you're sending it to can receive so let me let me actually show you how it's implemented so let me go to save transfer from save transfer from let me show you how it's implemented here uh -huh. look at it here so See this safe transfer and this is an internal function. Let me go and show you how it's implemented. So this see this function now. See what it, it does here. It says check on received. So what this function does is that it checks that who you are sending it to has that function. If it is not a normal EOA. What I mean by EOA is normal address. Like my address now, your address is not, they don't need to do those checks. You understand? But if it's not an EOA, there, there are ways to check that contract an an address is not an EOA. When I mean EOA, it's only one address and CA is contract address. So if you want to check that a, a contract address, if you want to send token to a contract address, this this safe, what it does is that it checks that that contract address can receive. Because if you cannot receive it, it's gone. Like you just send it there and it's not doing anything there and it's just waste. So it's good to use it, understand? So basically, if you implement this, that means you are that means the idea is that you have a way to make use of that nft in fact you might you might implement this this thing now that i said here you might add this to your contract 
this function to your contract and you might not have a way to pull it out but at least if they see this thing they know that okay you want to be able to receive if 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 you don't have a way to send it out that's another case when but once you have this function you can easily call it to know that okay this person has um this this person has um the or this person wants to be receiving an NFC in that address so yeah that's how that works so let's just quickly go down so yeah so that's that the owner the safe transfer from yeah go ahead speak okay so um the difference between safe transfer from and safe this in fact you know i don't even notice that this, these two functions have the same name for different arguments you understand so it's something that can be done there's this um, method overloading so you can just put the same two two methods of the same name two functions of the same name for different arguments and you will not get an error so that was happening here so basically what this one does is that it gives you the ability to pass in it passing data for whatever reason if you want to pass in data and this data can be like information to call on that function and stuff like that but yeah they're just the difference that this one allows you passing data which most times you don't really need it but yeah there's some use cases for it so yeah this is the same approved function you saw before i'll put in the i'll put in the um the people the like say open now or or foundation or variable i'll put the address here and i'll put the particular token you understand i can put the particular token i want to approve them for you understand but then this one is like is like the elder brother of this one meaning that it's, this one allows you to set one abby this one allows you to give tell them that i want you to be able to spend all my tokens so using this approve now what you're telling them is that i want you to be able to spend my token so if, if you had like 10 tokens you might say that okay i want you to be able to spend my token the one that the id is two you understand the one that the id is two and or you can just be adding them one by one but here i'm telling them that i want you to be able to spend all my tokens so this operator here now you put in open address i'm putting true and once you call this function you're telling them that i want to open to be able to spend all my token which people do most times if you want them to be able to sell for you then this get approved is just basically just like allowance you want to know if you pass in an address here now sorry if you pass in an id here you want to know the the because of it's only one now it returns only one see look at this here address operator it returns only one so basically if i put in a token id here i want to see that one operator that i gave the ability to spend my token see that's what i was saying before which is only one as mean you can um the allowance function works differently any address you put in any any address you put in it gives you the amount any address you put in but this one now you put in the id and it will not give you the address so you know that now you know that it's unique because you cannot have more than one address mapping to one id then it's just like this get approved is like working for this which is this one sets this one gets this one sets all then this one gets all so basically if you if you pass in your address now you understand if you pass in your address oh sorry if you pass in your address here and you pass in the operator say if you pass in your address here and you pass in open c here they'll return true or false meaning that did you allow did you give them the ability to call to use all your tokens or to spend all your tokens for you so basically if you come here and call this function with open c address and put in true here once you call this function with your address and open c address you, you should get true because now they are, they are, this function basically is a getter function that says that you give a particular operator the ability to spend all your tokens so so far does this make sense or do you have any question before I go ahead Any question? I'm for now, oh. sir. All right, all right, all right. That's that's okay. So let's move to EIP one one five five. Let's move to EIP one one five five.
sorry. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you are on five five. So let's do the same thing. Okay, um, let me let me create the NFT here. Let me see how what I'm meant to replicate here. So okay, in the constructor, I'm just meant to do the same thing. You just meant to do the same thing, um, just like I did here. So NFT. So this is this one. Um, so let me try and compile again. Let me see if I have any error. Okay, it's compiled successfully. So that worked. That worked, 14 files compiled. But I don't know why is this thing not giving me... Okay, great. It's now showing me something meaningful. So yeah, contracts. So this is the ABI I was talking about. Yes. So if you come here now, you will see what we what we use to call it so if you look this look at this thing well it contains the functions so come here now let's let's look for one function okay see events now transfer events so this is kind of the, the json representation of how what the contracts look like go ahead um please okay. i just i yeah i remember when um whenever I'm trying to add a token on trust wallets, maybe trust wallets, right? And yeah. there's always a section place to impute the decimal. What is the decimal? How does it come about? All right. So yeah, good question. You know, um, if you notice, you've not since we since we've been dealing with since we've been talking about these um contracts and stuff like that, we've never mentioned um floats which is numbers that have points, right? But you know that in money, when you're dealing with money, you have a lot of cases whereby you have this point, this, this point, this, this point, this, this point, this. So that decimal thing is a way to kind of increment your value. So basically, this is, um, let's say you have, you have um, one NF, you have 20 tokens, right? And you know that if you do, if you want, if if you if you send your if you divide your token into three places, you would have three can divide twenty, right? You have like something point something. But if you represent that on a smart contract, you would lose that point. You would lose that place because it's round. It rounds down. You understand? Smart contract round down. You understand? So if you have five divided by two, instead of it to get two point five, you get two. Okay, okay, let me zoom in. All right, so yeah, instead of you to have two, 2.5, you have two. So imagine that this rounding down was happening in your smart contract, you'll be everybody will be losing money on their NFT on their tokens, right? So what is 18 decimal thing does is that you multiply by 18. So that even when you want to represent um even when you want to represent decimals, you can represent it without showing that it's decimal. So for instance, now that's your, that's your, instead of you to now be dividing that your 20 by three, is that you're dividing your 20 by 20 times 10 raised to power 18, which is most times the decimal. Most NFTs, sorry, most ERC20 tokens use um, um, 18 decimal. So basically you're kind of incrementing your number so that you'll be able to get the real value. So that, that why, if you, if you now go to your, if you go to Metamax now, they are dividing by that value. That's why they can show you points. On Metamask, they are showing you points. You understand? So basically, what they are doing is that the reason why they need, they need your, your, your decimal on, on Metamask and Trust Wallet is that they use that value to tell you how much you have. Because on the on the contract, you don't have any point values. It's just, it's, it's kind of uplifting the value by like by multiplying by 10 raised to power the decimal, most times, which is 18. But when it now comes to the trust wallet, they can now divide because now you're not working on a on a solidity environment. You're working on a JavaScript environment or other numbers that allow allow sorry other programming languages that allow floats. You understand? So the main goal of decimal is so that you be able to represent numbers that solidity cannot represent. You understand? So when you increment a number, 
You understand? You can now do other operations that would normally give you points. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, it does. All right, good. So um, now the ABI I was talking about before. So this kind of like this, this, this basically gives us what JavaScript understands. So if you remember when I'm talking about allowance, see allowance here. You know when I'm talking about um, approve, see approve here. So all these things are like this ABI is you use it when you want to call this contract. So you see the same ABI here and. Yeah, ABI is like one of the things in this place. So the other ones, byte code, blah, blah, blah. But this ABI is like the most important. It gives you a way to interact with your contract from other languages. So even if I was using Python now, I can still use this ABI to interact with this contract when I deploy it. You understand? Yeah, and yeah. So let me go back to my this thing. So yeah, I've deployed this one. We don't have any error, it compiles us fully. I think what we'll talk about today last is EIP-1155. Then tomorrow we can now continue. Let me see what we have. Okay, we've talked about hard hats, we've talked about open zeppelin, we've talked about this ERC standard. Okay, tomorrow we might talk about testing in JS. And that's almost that's almost all, which is which is really nice. So let's just talk about EIP-1155 quickly because um yeah, I'll talk about it quickly and We'll call it a day. So let me just quickly go by it. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. So yeah. Open Zeppelin token. So yeah, we are done with this. So let's go ahead and check this out. So let's create a file called Web Tree L one one five five. So, so let's do that now. I just copy it. And let me look for that where that one is now. So, ERC one one five five. So let's just change one to ERC one one five five. One one five five. Then change it to ERC. Yeah, so that's that. So let's let's call this one. Let's copy this. Call this ERC one one. Let's just see one one five five here. Then you just bring this one in and like add this here. And um Let's just remove this part for now. We don't really know what that looks like now. So let's just go through it. Then we can now see what it actually looks like. So let's go and read. Let's go and go. Let's let's go through the interface for ERC one one five five. So um, this is it. So yeah, this is it. So yeah, we have. Okay, let me take this down. This is taking space. Mm, let me reduce it. I think it's too much. I don't even know if we'll be able to see it. Let me try something. Can you guys see? Okay. So um, just like before, these are events. They're important though because they are in the they are in the standard. But right now, we just know that they are events, and we will talk about the functions, which are more important. But okay, let me also go and look for the one one five five for you. And send it one one AIP one one five five. Yeah, I found it. Let me share that with you. Let's 
Sorry, give me give me one minute. So yeah, um, sorry about that. Let me just um, so drop this on the chat. This is the stand EIP for EIP one one five five. So you can also read through that. Please read through these things; they will help you. So yeah, um, so now let me give you like a background of how EIP one one five five works. So you know, I said that. Um, EIP-1155 is like a contract that you can do both ERC-20 stuff and ERC-721 stuff. And now we use it as like a contract that creates tokens. So you can either create ERC-20 tokens or you can either create EIP-1, ERC-721 tokens, which is NFTs. Now, the way it works is, this balance of now, the way it works is you pass in an account right and you pass in the id and this id now is either like as you create account as you're sorry as you're creating tokens you're creating tokens it's incrementing so if you create a token now you have one yeah if you create another token you have two yeah just like ju just like that so you might have as uniswap construct i'm sorry open seas contract now they might have up to two thousand more than two thousand tokens have been created nfts have been created inside their yeah, EIP one one five five token, you understand? Because they are they, people are creating tokens every every minute there, you understand? So what what happens is that if you pass in your account, it's not enough. You need to pass in the particular token you want to get the balance for, you understand? So basically, imagine I created I created a token inside of this contract and I name it Web Three Ladies token, and I name it Web Three Ladies token, right? When I pass in um when i pass in the account and i pass in the id it gives me my balance so if i just i, I cannot pass in only address because of their other their other tokens here the other the other tokens here so basically i need to pass in the id to say the particular token i want to get the balance for you get so also there's this function that allows you to do check balance but in bulk so in batch, so you can put in many accounts and many IDs. So it's just like this one, but instead of taking one, 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 it takes in arrays, accounts, IDs. So that's just the difference, no big deal. So you now return an array of what you ask them for. So basically when you pass in an array of addresses, you pass in an array of IDs of the same length, obviously, then it now does the checking for you. So this set Apura for all, just like we did before you can approve a, a a an operator to spend all your tokens both your arc20 token or both your arc115 token everything you allowed you approve them to spend it because of you know before when you use this set approval for all it allows them to spend all your nfts in that contract but now this contract is an aip1155 token it doesn't just allow erc20 tokens they allow erc721 tokens right so that what i was doing is allowing you to spend everything then this is the same thing that was the other place is just checking if you allow them to do stuff so yeah this safe transfer from just like we did before but now look at this id here just like the id you saw here you understand because you are, you are dealing with many tokens you cannot just be you cannot just call this without this you are dealing with many tokens so you need to actually call this so id is called here you understand id is called here so to say the, the particular idea you're talking about, then the amount. So for instance, now the way it's done, the way this NFT is, this way um, EIP1155 works is that um, when you're creating these tokens, because you, you will see in the function where these tokens are actually created. So when you're creating these tokens, you have, um, when, when you're creating these tokens, you have, if you want to create an NFT, 
and you want to set only one, you understand? You just give it a total supply of one, you understand? But I'll still show you that. You give it a total supply of one. If total supply is, 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 is um, is, if, 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 sorry, if you want to create an NFT, give it a total, total supply of one. If you want to create an ERC training token, you give it a bigger total supply based on what you want, right? So basically this does the transfer. Then this does the same thing, but in bash, the same thing, but see what's happening here. It takes in ID, IDs and IDs and array. So our time is up and our time is up, but let me just go ahead and go through, or not really go through, I just want to show you guys something. Time is up and I want to go and sort out something. But yeah, let me show you how it's created. Okay. Okay, this sets URI. Okay, because this URI cannot be meaningful. Better. I want to show you where it's created, where each NFT is, which, where each EIP is created. EIP 155 token is created. So it's. Okay, see, the, see where it's happening here. The process of creating a token, either. NFT or ARC20 token. So this is the mint function. This is the mint function. It takes in, depends on mint things, it takes in the ID, you understand? It takes in the amounts and it takes in data. This data is optional. If you don't have anything to pass in here, you just pass in empty quotes, like quotation mark with nothing inside. So that is, this is not a problem. But most times, if you want to use this, you definitely pass in a function, function signature or something like that. But don't, don't, don't worry about this. So yeah, um, our time is up and I want to go and sort out something real quick. So that'll be all for today. And before before we start tomorrow, I'll still go over this again because I know I didn't really finish this, but I'll still go over this again, this AIC, um, AIC 1155. Just that time is up and I need to rush. So yeah um that's all for today guys um that's all for today do you have any questions concerning the ones we've talked about already Does anyone have any question? Not at all, sir. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. I would see, sorry, not, not tomorrow. It's not tomorrow, it's Friday, right? Friday, it's not tomorrow. Friday, right? yeah. yeah, on Friday, I would see. And please, before that time, just go through these things yourself for your own good, please, for your own good. Just go through it yourself and Anything you don't understand, just send me a message or you send it on the group and tag me and I will do my best to answer. So yeah, um, have Check a good night. No assignment this week. Eh? Are we having assignment free week? Are we having assignment free week? Um, I would share that. I would, I would either send it today or I'll send it tomorrow. But yeah, you're having assignments. You definitely have assignments. No, I said, I thought we were having a free week, assignment free week, you know. Is that what it said? Yes, that's what I said. Oh, that what they said. They didn't tell me that about apps. If if you're not no, mistaken. no, no, I said that's not what they said. I said I thought that's what you would, you were giving us an assignment free week. Oh, oh, did, oh. did I say, did I say that? I I don't remember saying that. No, you didn't. I was just hoping it was it was wishful thinking. <laughs> okay, there's no problem. I would if I would give, I would I would, I would communicate to Janet and she'll communicate to you guys. But yeah. That's all for today, guys. All right, now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.